Hello again. It's that time of the year. As the nights get longer and darker, that we have one thing to look forward to. That, of course, is the 2019.3 release of Sea Lion. Now, the main focus of this release has been on performance and quality issues. We're always working on these, of course, but this cycle has had the number one priority. And number two. Maybe even number three. But that doesn't mean there are no new features. In fact, we have some rather big announcements, as we'll see. But let's start with that quality focus. Many outstanding bugs and issues have been fixed or addressed, resulting in speed-ups and better responsiveness across the board. Now that's hard to demo, you just have to try it for yourself. Completions are visibly faster though. We actually source our completions from multiple providers now, most recently including Clang D. These providers all work asynchronously in the background, so we can start showing completions as soon as we get the fastest results, and add more complete but slower ones as they come in. But most of the dozens of fixes and improvements that both the C-Line and platform teams have worked so hard on just contribute to a smoother, more responsive feeling overall. Switching to the build system, the big news here is that we now have support for Ninja and other custom CMake generators. This is made possible by adopting the newer CMake file API. In the case of Ninja, this can really speed up build times on some of the larger projects. We also now support CMake defaults which allow you to configure defaults for a number of CMake settings, such as the generator to use, options, toolchain, and others. And CLine is now more forgiving if some, but not all, CMake configs fail to load, as may happen with remote development, for example. If you're not currently connected, but have some local configs as well. On Mac and Linux, we're now bundling LLDB9, and we've improved the pretty printers for LLDB in general. Do be aware that on macOS, this support is better in libc++ than libstud c++, at least for now. For both LLDB and GDB, you can now put their respective init files into the root directory of your project, rather than just in the home directory for all projects. This lets you customise options and commands to the debuggers in a much more fine-grained way. To enable, just set it in an init file in the home directory, like this. And over on Windows, we've also fixed some issues with the disassembly there. While we're with Windows, some more big news there. We now have support for WSL2. This joins the WSL1 support we already had, and works pretty much the same way. You can also set custom debuggers in the WSL toolchain, and that's true too for our more general remote dev support. And resyncing with remote hosts now happens automatically by default. If that's too expensive in your case, you can return to the manual syncing behavior with this registry option. And we now have another option for remote dev, remote GDB server. With this approach, you build a CMake target locally, perhaps with a cross compiler, then have it automatically transfer the binary to a remote machine and run it under GDB server, connected automatically to the local C line debugger. A much easier and seamless operation overall. And to improve the first run experience when setting up Remote Dev, we'll now warn you if rsync or tar on Windows are missing from your system, rather than leaving it to harder to diagnose errors later. We're not sitting still on language support either. With C20 still being finalized, we already now have support for concepts. This is not just recognition of the syntax, but actually gives insights into the code, such as completions on constrained template type parameters, and on types constrained by is same or is base of. And even navigation. And refactoring. In more down to earth but useful and welcome news, if a function has an endless loop but is annotated with attribute no return, we no longer warn about it. And in the editor, we've added a new shortcut to toggle between source and header files. You've always been able to do this with go to related symbol, which usually did what you want but it's not as specific and had some limitations sometimes. Because this is such an often used feature when working with C++, we've made something much more tailored. For example, if you don't just have a simple header source distinction, perhaps you're using a separate file convention for template implementations, CLine would do its best to find all of those too, and always show you the most recently used ones first. In tools integration, we've added MongoDB support, as well as more VCS improvements. But the big news is that code coverage finally comes to CLine. We now integrate GCOV and LLVMCOV, so set it up with options like these, which do vary, so read the blog post for more details, 
and you can then run with coverage from the run icon or the navigation bar. And you'll see coverage results annotated with colour bars in the gutter next to the source code. You can click on one of these areas to see the hit count. Alternatively, there's a dedicated tool window that collects the results in tabular form with statistics. You may need to configure the tool chain, in which case you can do that in the new coverage section of the build, execute, deployment area in settings. Note that coverage is not currently available on the remote tool chain. There are many more fixes, refinements, and even features. Some of the highlights, scroll bars. We've added an option to make them more visible and even change colors and opacity on macOS. Spell checker in CMake and Doxygen comments. And the Rust plugin continues to be updated. Watch for another detailed blog post soon. And Catalina, the latest version of macOS, caused a number of issues such as font rendering and project opening problems, all of which have been addressed in this release, as well as the point release on 2019.2. So, a solid release, with better performance and responsiveness across the board, as well as some major new features like Ninja support, WSL2, code coverage and concepts. A great setup for the new decade. As always, you can find out more or download a 30-day free trial at jetbrains.com slash line.